Hello there everybody and welcome to a new video for Jacked Alliance 3. Today I want to introduce to you the best guns in the game. I've been doing a lot of research recently about all the weapons in the game and I've decided to give you this video where I introduce to you in every category the best guns that I've found. I have in every category two candidates though. This is personally because I know that you don't always get the gun that you want and on top of that, even if you have all the guns that you want, you'd not always want to have the same ammo on all of your guys. So it's like that. The first gun I'll mention is always the one that I personally subjectively think is the best. And the second one is the close competitor that you can use as an alternative. So that being said, timestamps are down below. Let's get started with the handguns. My personal favorite in King of the Hill is the Anaconda. It's a dream of a gun. It uses .44 caliber and has armor penetration. It has a decent damage per bullet. It has a high aiming bonus. I'm personally a sucker for precision and it also of features a decent range. The only downside of this beauty here, the lack of modding options. At least we get barrel modifications, which I personally love, either more range or less attack uh, costs, which is amazing given the damage per bullet. And we can use scopes or overwatch thingies. So this thing can be dual wielded and it's really, really a massive gun. Given the fact that it uses the same ammo that your six shooter, uh, not six shooter, your uh, peacemakers use. That's really powerful. The second spot here is the Desert Eagle. I personally dislike the Desert Eagle, even though it has a higher damage than the Anaconda, but you pay such a high price for it. You lose range compared to the Anaconda, you lose aiming bonus compared. But on the bright side, you gain a lot of customization options. Therefore, I'm not I'm not sure which one of the guns is actually really the best. I just know that the Desert Eagle has so many wonderful options for you how to modify it, but no scopes. You can modify the barrel a little bit. You can use UV dot tactical devices and stuff, but no barrel, um, no aiming devices. So it will always be much, much more of a close range weapon compared to the Anaconda. It also uses the same ammo, by the way. So higher damage, more customization, less range. Choose to your own liking. Next up, the SMG section. So here I want to start with the AKSU as my personal favorite of these, but I'm I'm torn, okay? Here I'm not really sure which one I would give the give the um, advantage. So the AKSU is a dream of an SMG. It has so much damage per bullet that it is almost on par with assault rifles. It comes with armor penetration because sadly it uses assault rifle ammo. It's a bit of a downside, but pretty much the only one. You have a decent range. The aiming bonus ain't too high, but SMGs are classic short range weapons where you won't be aiming too much. It can be modded in various ways that are quite beneficial. Even the higher advanced tactical devices are a possibility. So all in all, it's an SMG that features so much damage and armor penetration that will be a good company for all stages of the game. The Commando is the counterpart for the AKSU, and I'm not quite sure which one I personally really find better. It uses 5.56mm bullets, so it's a, uh, it's a variation, and it also comes with pretty decent damage, and since the ammo is a higher caliber, it also has armor penetration, which is amazingly important in the later stages of the game when the enemy grows more and more armored. You have a lot of different uh, modification options, even a grenade launcher, which I personally love. It gives the SMG so much extra firing power if you have the explosives to handle it. So it's hard for me to decide, but personally, I think these two guys are the best depending on what kind of ammo you have available and what kind of gun you have available. I think I personally would still prefer the AKSU because of this, uh, a little bit of an extra damage, but it's up to you. So next up, the assault rifles. So here we have two real winners, and those were the AK-74 as the first and uh, most dominant model for me. It uses Russian bullets, so you won't be using NATO bullets for that, but it's the only assault rifle 
bringing you medium armor penetration combined with 30 damage per bullet. This thing is a beast in terms of damage dealing. It also has a lot of uh, um, modification options, bipod or grenade launcher, so you can really get yourself acquainted with some high quality gear. There are no real downsides to this thing here, except for the ammo being uh, probably something uh, running dry, depending on your uh, setup. The close competitor to this uh, one, the one that I would prefer if I'd had to use NATO bullets, would be the FN Fall. It has not as much uh, armor penetration, but it competes with the damage per bullet. It has a real high customization uh, um, range. So you have really a lot of uh, options here, including barrel modifications, which I personally love. They're quite rare and therefore worth mentioning. And its only downside is a fast condition loss, which I personally consider a joke. If you have enough parts, that will be rarely an issue. You just have to repair a little bit more often, but, well, you get so much for that. And these two assault rifles, they dish out a lot of damage. I would always prefer the AK-74 if I can, due to the medium armor penetration. That's, that's just beast. That's really amazing to be able to shred armor like that. And it's the only assault rifle allowing you to do this without using specialized ammo. Moving on over to the sniper rifles. My personal favorite, and I cannot lie, is the Dragunov. You have a little bit of a trade-off in terms of bullet damage. You have more damage per bullet on other sniper rifles, but you have a burst firing mode, my friends. This is insane. This thing deals so much damage in burst fire. The only downside to it is that it has a little bit of a uh, lower aiming bonus. So to be effective with it, you would be preferably either using lower range to begin with, because you know, you can do that, or you just modify things that help you with aiming, the bipod, you have stocks which help you with that. All in all, for a gun that spits out so much damage and burst fire, you can still modify it into a decent accuracy, just give it a good shot. And wow, this thing is amazing. It deals so much damage and, you know, if you manage to hit, hit all three bolts of the burst fire, this thing is stupidly good. It uses, again, Russian 7.62mm bullets, and you notice a pattern here. These bullets hit like a truck, and they are on many good guns, so that might be an issue. The only one that I could think of. That's why I went up and used the PSG-1 as an alternative to the Dragunov, because you can use NATO bullets with it. It has really good damage per bullet. You can kill off most enemies with a headshot with that one. It has a good crit chance, which is also fun, and it has a decent variety of modifications. It's all in all a very reliable and good sniper rifle that can fulfill any job, but unlike the Dragunov, it can't spit death like uh, the other things can. I like it as my second personal favorite because it's a jack-of-all-trades sniper rifle, which uses ammo that's not too rare and it's very uh, ammo efficient because it only sh shoots one bullet compared to the Dragunov which is a little bit of an ammo eater. Okay next up on the list the machine guns. Here it was a little bit hard for me but my my heart belongs to the HK-21. I personally think this is the most wonderful rifle that assault rifle and uh, no, sorry <laughs> machine gun to wield out of several reasons. It uses NATO bullets, which is really cool, because these are quite available. It has a decent damage per volley. It is only, as a downside, cumbersome and needs to be mounted, but for me, my machine gunners always do that, and or I use traits that mitigate this issue. I love about the HK-21 that it has so many modification slots. It uses ammo that is not too rare, and it spits out a decent amount of damage. It's really, really cool. And it also is very accurate. So, really good companion. My second competitor for that one is the RPK-74. It is a non-cumbersome variant. And it also has, just like the other gun, ammo penetration due to its caliber. I think the RPK outcompetes the Mini-Me just because of that. The um, armor penetration is just a uh, thing that 
makes the Mini-Me a weaker choice, in my humble opinion. The RPK, though, has less modification options, but it is not as clunky, doesn't prepare as much, as much preparation, and can be fired while running around. Pretty interesting option, but if I have the options to choose what I want, the HK-21 is my personal favorite. Like I said, the Minimi has no armor pen or has the uh, lower armor penetration here. I don't know where it really scores because it still is on paper light, but you have this one and I don't know, maybe the Minimi and the RPK share the second spot on this one. This was the thing that I spent way too much time thinking about it, so I'll leave that up to the comment section to help me out on this question. Moving on to the shotguns. My personal favorite here stays with the M1014. Although, I gotta say, the two variants, the AA-12 and the M1014, I think they share the first rank almost together. I love the M1014 because, like I already said, subjectively, I'm a sucker for accuracy, and that's what this thing offers. It also has a decent range, which can be lowered to make a uh, lower attack uh, cost out of it but apart from that it is a high damage and long range gun that is pretty precise and can be modded to be really good in short range combats and well, i personally like this one just for what it does the close competitor here and it's hard to compare these weapons is the aa-12 the aa-12 has a well Buckshot Burst, which is a unique skill, and it dishes out way more damage than the M1014 has, but most of the time it's just overkill damage because you don't need that much, uh, that much damage. Therefore, well, it's hard for me to decide. It has a lower range, it has more attack cost, but it has so much more damage that it's really, really hard for me to decide which one I'd give the uh, first spot here. I really... With the last two categories, I had a very hard time, but I also got to say, in my own defense, the other categories had way more options to choose from. Maybe that's the reason, but my personal favorites are the uh, M1014 and uh, the AA-12. Personally, would always pick whatever I got. Since they share the same ammo, it's really prefer prefer whatever you can get your hands on. Personally, think the AA-12 is the hard, um, is the much harder hitting thing, and the M1014 is the more precise thing. Right, that's been that. I'm skipping heavy weapons here because heavy weapons are basically just a variation of, uh, well, choose your range. And, well, I, I personally didn't find too much comparing ground there. They don't even have weapon modifications, so please forgive me for leaving these out. So, leave me comments down there if you feel like add-ons, or if you disagree or you agree. I really love the discussion there. And let me know if I missed a spot. I don't know. I'm open for uh, ideas here. Leave a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And as usual, there's a playlist link down there leading to all the other Jack the Lions 3 things that I did. And I'd be happy if you'd give a look. So, that being said, thanks for your time. Have a good day, and see you soon.